In our busy world, family time frequently gets neglected. It is vital that we give attention to our families while we can, and it is especially important to give attention to what God says in His Word about our homes. For the next few minutes, let's join Scott Pauley as we open the Scriptures and find God's message for your family. Soon we will move on from the opening pages of the book of Genesis. But for now, let me give you one more thought today from these opening chapters that I think will help our families. I want to talk to you today about help for fallen families. Now, I know what you're thinking. Immediately you think I'm talking about a marriage breakup or children departing or some awful thing happening. But here's the reality. We all have fallen families. You see, there's so many broken people in this world because that's what sin brings, and only the Creator can make them whole again. We live in a fallen world. Every bad thing, every sad thing is the result of sin, and every family is a fallen family. The quicker we understand that, the better off we're all going to be because then we can find the help that is found in Christ alone. You are a fallen person. Your spouse, a fallen person. Your children, fallen people. You said they're beautiful, they're wonderful. Well, they're beautiful and wonderful, but they're sinners, and we're all sinners. Our modern problems are ancient problems. It's not social. It is spiritual. It is something we all deal with. And what's the answer? Only Jesus. I want to pick up where we left off last time in Genesis chapter 3 by pointing out to you that it is in the context of a family, it is in the context of a home life that has been broken by sin that the first promise of a Savior is given. Isn't that great? You see, the real problem is always a sin problem, and the only, problem, the only solution to a sin problem is a Savior, and Christ is the only Savior. Here it is, Genesis 3, verse 15. God is speaking to the devil, and he says, I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed. There it is. The seed of the woman, that's a reference to Messiah, to Christ, to the one who would be born of a virgin, her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. He said basically to the devil, you're going to nip at the heel of Christ and the heel of his people for a long time, but he's going to bruise your head. Aren't you glad that Christ is the victor? Maybe you feel terribly defeated today. Maybe in your home life you feel terribly defeated. I want you to know Christ is greater than the devil. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world, and God is able. Let me give you a few observations today about fallen families. First of all, this account in Genesis shows us the marks of a fallen family. What are the marks? What are the characteristic marks of a fallen family? Well, there's division. You remember, Satan brought division between Adam and Eve. Then he brought division between Cain and Abel. That's a mark. Uh, one of the marks is shame and fear. Think of this. There was no shame and there was no fear until sin entered in. Then suddenly they're ashamed and they're afraid. Then there's blame. Read it in Genesis 3. Uh, Adam blames Eve. Uh, that's a bad move, by the way, gentlemen. He blames Eve. Eve blames the devil. The blame game's going on. We all want to blame somebody else. No, that's, that's a mark of sin. You see, when, when our hearts are repentant and right with God, we're not blaming others. We're confessing our culpability. Now, then there was a loss of identity, real identity confusion. That's what sin always brings is chaos and conflict. For example, we know that Eve was created as an equal image bearer right? They're both made in the image of God. They're equal image bearers. But now, as a result of the fall, she has to struggle for authority. That's what the Bible says. You can read it for yourself in Genesis 3. Uh, your desire will be to your husband, and he will rule over thee. This was the beginning of the battle of the sexes, if you will. Uh, they were, he was created to complement, and now suddenly there's conflict. That wasn't God's way. Sin brought that. And what about Adam's identity? Well, his identity was all tied up in his work, it seems. So now uh, his work is going to be more difficult. Before it was all enjoyment and a wonderful stewardship. 
And now he's going to have to work harder to produce. You see the struggle, uh, the, the harshness, the hardness, the hatefulness of a world marked by sin. Uh, the woman turns to man, the man turns to his work, and what they both need was to turn to God. These were marks of a fallen family. But God didn't leave us just with the marks of a fallen family. May I point out today the mercies to a fallen family. One of the mercies was that God let, let them keep their family. That's beautiful, isn't it? Uh, God gave them children. God gave them a life, even outside Eden. It wasn't perfect. but God let them keep their home. You see, family is not less important in a fallen world. It's more important because there's a measure of protection and provision found there. Adam and Eve need one another. Friend, you need your spouse, and you need your children, and your children need you. Home is supposed to be a shelter from the world around us, a, a little taste of heaven on earth. And so that's one of God's mercies. Another one of his mercies was that he didn't allow them to live like that forever. We think of God driving them out of the garden as all judgment. I think it was mercy. If they had stayed in that garden and eaten of the tree of life in their fallen state, they would have lived forever separated from God. Driving them out kept them from living in that fallen state forever. Uh, the tree of life will show up in Revelation. In the New Jerusalem someday, we'll eat of it. Why? Because there'll be no sin there. There'll be no danger there. We can be one with one another and with the Lord for all eternity. Isn't that going to be glorious? The perfect home life someday again. But the ultimate mercy was his provision for their sin. That was Jesus. That was the promise of Messiah. And so ponder one more thing today. Not only the marks of this fallen family and the mercy that he showed to a fallen family, but then the mending of this fallen family. Adam could not fix his family. Let that sink in. Eve could not change the consequences for what she had done. The only hope they had was in Christ. Look, your family can't save you. Only Christ can do that. And you can't rescue your family through your own power. Only Christ can do that. Two fallen people can't help each other up. Look, the only man who never fell is the only hope for fallen man. The only man who never fell is the God-man, the Lord Jesus Christ. And only he is able. That's why when you come to the New Testament, read Romans 5 today. Uh, Christ gives us much more than we lost in the garden. We don't go back to Eden. We can't do that. But we go forward to Christ. And Christ someday is going to give us the ultimate. 1 Corinthians 15, 22 says, As in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Oh, my friend, the only answer for all this complexity in our families is the simplicity that is in Christ. Christ in his rightful place in your heart and in his rightful place in your home will lift up. I, I tell you, Christ redeems. He's the redeemer, and he can make redeemed families. Charles Weigel was a faithful servant of Christ. He was serving the Lord when he came home one day to discover that his wife had left him. She didn't want to be a preacher's wife any longer. His heart was broken. But through that brokenness, the Lord brought amending to him. And Charles Weigel sat down one day and wrote these words, I would love to tell you what I think of Jesus, since I found in him a friend so strong and true. I would tell you how he changed my life completely. He did something that no other friend could do. No one ever cared for me like Jesus. There's no other friend so kind as he. No one else could take the sin and darkness from me. Oh, how much he cared for me. Friend, I want to tell you today, you love your family, they love you, but no one loves you like Jesus loves you. And if you'll love Christ and follow Christ and let him have his rightful place, he alone can lift your fallen family. He alone can restore. There is help for fallen families, and it is found in Jesus Christ. We hope that you will spend some time talking with your family today about these truths from God's Word and spend time praying for each member of your family. You may find additional podcasts, helpful articles, full-length Bible messages, and other resources at enjoyingthejourney.org. Until next time, may God bless you and your family.